A very good morning to Gartmore and Beclivey Parish Churches. On this, a Sunday, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, and what is described as Sanctuary Sunday, the Scottish Faiths Council for Refugees have asked us today to remember in our worship and in our prayers those who come to Scotland from overseas, those who seek asylum on our shores, those who come seeking safety and a new life. And so let us worship God wherever we are this morning. The hymn is Let Us Build a House Where Love Can Dwell. And so let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we gather in one heart and mind to pray for all families and individuals who have left or fled their country, their land, their homes, seeking safer and better lives. We lift up to you their hopes and dreams, their fears and anxieties, and all their needs and necessities, that they may be protected on their journeys their dignity and rights may be fostered, honoured and upheld, and they may be welcomed with open arms into generous and compassionate communities. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. This prayer was written by a Syrian refugee who now worships in St Mark's Church, not far from here in Stirling. Loving God, we thank you for the safe arrival on these shores of all who have had to flee from war, conflict and unrest. We pray for those who now call Scotland home, having arrived here from distant and war-torn lands. Bless all who arrived here as refugees, and may they be welcomed here by whom, those whom they meet. We ask your blessing also on those whom they have left behind, families, friends, loved ones, whom they may never see again. For every refugee who safely reaches this country, there are countless others who cannot leave and who must remain in harm's way. Protect them, O Lord. Enable them to remain in contact with those who have been able to leave. 
as refugees find a new life here in Scotland. We pray that they and their families will settle here. We pray for their children starting a new school and making new friends. We pray for the adults learning a new language and a new culture. We pray for those helping them to find their feet in their new lives, with people who come to live in our communities. Hear these our prayers, for we offer them in the name of Christ, who was a refugee from Bethlehem, who fled into Egypt and then returned later to Galilee. In his words we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Gospel lesson today is taken from the Gospel according to St Mark, chapter 4, and reading from verse 35. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great gale arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Amen. May God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. Amen. In his book, Letter to a Man in a Fire, cancer survivor Reynolds Price responds to a letter from a young medical student named Jim, who has developed, sadly, a life-threatening cancer. In his letter, Jim writes, I want to believe in a God who cares, because I may meet him sooner than expected. I think I am at the point where I can accept the existence of God, but I can't yet believe God cares about me. In his struggle with the raging storm of cancer, this young man could have taken the words right out of the mouths of the disciples when they cried out to Jesus, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? It is evening and the disciples are in the boat with Jesus. They are crossing the Sea of Galilee when a great storm arises. And as often is the case in the Bible, the sea stands for chaos, that which is to be feared. The boat is shaken by the wind and the waves. It is filling up with water and is ready to sink. All the while, Jesus is asleep, seemingly indifferent to their peril and unperturbed by their fear. He seems to be untroubled by the storm. And the, the words that cry out from the words of the disciples can be our words on so many occasions in life. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? When we consider the personal tragedies that people face every day and the global COVID crisis that is having such an impact on communities around the world, we may wonder sometimes metaphorically if God is asleep on the cushion. When Glasgow this week refused to take more asylum seekers and refugees because of the lack of UK funding and the lack of proper accommodation. When people are dying in the boats in the English Channel and in the Mediterranean, having spent their life savings to trafficking gangs who care little 
or nothing for their safety. These are the kinds of things and many more that beat against our hopes and our dreams. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? In the face of all these things, the Christian faith declares that God does care for each one of us. The creator of the heavens and the earth knows us by name and loves us. We are part of the created world. When we consider this vast universe and our small place in it, it is an astonishing claim to say that God knows our need and provides for us like a father and a mother. In the book Theology for a Troubled Believer, the author notes that understanding that we are not the centre of all things helps us gain perspective about our lives. We are material beings, we are part of a larger world in which we are subject to physical laws and, as he puts it, vulnerable to injury, illness, decay and death. Such awareness leads us to humility in the face of the wonder of the universe and the greatness of our creator. We are also spiritual beings. When confronted by his creator, Job, in spite of everything that has happened to him, grasps the greatness, the mystery and the goodness of God. In the midst of his suffering, Job declares, I know that my Redeemer lives and at the last he will stand upon the earth. Then from my flesh I shall see God. As Alan puts it, Job has found his way home the hard way, through the path of being reduced to nothing but his bare skin and bones. He is raised by God's spirit to the soaring conviction that no matter what happens to him, he belongs to God and God will bring him to the divine presence in glory. In addition to discovering our place in God's universe, there is a second step. Trusting in God's loving care enables us to experience God in the midst of suffering. This is the struggle the disciples face in the boat. They feel alone and abandoned by the one in whom they have put their trust. When the early church told this story of the storm on the sea, they, like us, lived on this side of the resurrection. Yet they, like us, they wondered, where is Jesus when this little boat of the early church is being buffeted and rocked and beaten and almost destroyed in the stormy seas of the Roman Empire? In part, the story is told to reassure the church that Jesus is with us even in our suffering, when we cannot imagine immediately see him or recognise him. Reynolds Price tells of an 87-year-old woman who wrote to him about one of those moments in which the clouds scatter, those Celtic places where the veil is thin. The darkness lifts and we somehow see God clearer. She was facing her own time of difficulty as she was going through exhausting medical tests and surgery and post-surgery. One day she had a kind of vision, I suppose. I went out along the Galilee hills and came to a crowd around a man, she writes. And I stood on the outskirts intending to listen. But he looked over at me from the crowd and said, what do you want? And I said, could you send someone to come with me and help me to stand up after my medical test because I cannot manage alone? And Jesus thought for a moment and said, how would it be if I came? How would it be if I came? This is precisely what God has done in Jesus Christ. God has come to us in our suffering and our pain, in our struggle to be human, in our fear and in our anxiety, and in our doubt and uncertainty. Jesus put off deity and put on humanity. He became one of us one with us, one for us. As the psalmist says, O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You search out my path. You are acquainted with all my ways. Where can I go from your spirit? 
that you will they be there and to hold me fast. So that even when it seems like we are in some kind of living hell, even there, we are assured that God is with us. When the terrified disciples call out to Jesus, he answers them by calming the wind and stilling the sea. They do not yet understand that the one who loves them is Lord, not only of their lives, but even of the wind and the waves. Jesus will teach them how to live by faith. He will teach them by example. He does not refuse the cross, but accepts it in faith. He knows betrayal, disappointment, grief, torture and even death. And yet he commits his life to God and finds perfect peace suspended on a cross between heaven and earth. And the resurrection is the sign that we have that everything that Jesus said and did is true. Yes, Jesus cares, but it does not mean that we will not go through times of danger, suffering or even death. The French philosopher Simone Weil was born to agnostic parents she suffered all her short life from heart and health problems. She fought in the Spanish Civil War and participated in the resistance in World War II. Along the way, she came to embrace Christianity in, and in the midst of a particular difficult time of suffering, she had an experience of Christ's presence. She had been reciting the, Herbert, the George Herbert um, poem, Love, as she often did in the midst of violent headaches. And Weil writes, it was during one of these recitations that Christ himself came down and took possession of me. I had never foreseen the possibility of a real contact person to person here below between a human being and God. Moreover, in this sudden possession of me by Christ, neither my senses nor my imagination had any part. I only felt in the midst of my suffering, the presence of love. Through any storm, we are held by the love of the one whom even the wind and the waves obey. We worship our risen Lord and we take assurance and hope from his word. Amen.
on this Sanctuary Sunday, our prayers were written by the Scottish Faiths Council for Refugees. Let us pray. God of family, we bring before you the parents who are weeping and lamenting, who are waiting for their children, whose trace is lost in the sea, in the desert, on railway tracks, in shipping containers and uncertainty. Men and women and children who had escaped from war zones, the famine and poverty of this world, with the hope for a better, safer life. God of life, we bring before you our lament for the dead, stranded at the borders of safety, who died fleeing through deserts over mountains and seas. We call to you and join in the cry of all, who sought justice and a better life for themselves and their children and perished in the process. God of justice, we bring before you political leaders, advisers and decision makers who hold the fate of others in their hands. Make them aware of the causes of migration and flight. Keep their consciences alive so that refugees are offered protection and dignity. Let them agree rules of residence that are based on human rights and guided by solidarity and compassion. God of peace, give us the strength to be witnesses of the suffering of the world and fill us with the fire of your spirit to renew our efforts to serve those in need and give us the grace to welcome to learn about and share our lives with people who come to live in our communities here in Scotland. Our prayers we offer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God bless us, our God who called the world into being, who breathed us into life, who provides us with new strength. May God bless us, our God whose love does not know borders nor walls, whose justice will come. Our God who casts down the mighty from their thrones and lifts up the lowly. May God bless you, wherever you are today, creator, redeemer and sustainer or Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you this day and always. Amen.